The other day I was asked how I do my breakout rooms in my online classes when I'm doing synchronous classes. Um, I'm using Zoom, but I've also used Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. I've also used Microsoft Teams. And when I send off, in particular in Zoom in this case here, um, off into a breakout room, what do I do? How do I get my students to work on things? So how do I share files with them? How do I communicate with them? Um, how do I get them to work on something together? So the basic answer to that is I have class notebook. Um, so my school has Office 365 as part of the whole school education account. And so I have access to be able to create a class notebook, which I add all my students to, and then they have their own individual sections. There's a collaboration space where everybody can work, content library, so on and so forth. I've talked about that before. But what happens if you don't have access to class notebook? Uh, maybe you don't have an education account at your school, or you're at a private school or something where you don't have access to those type of things. Well, you can create a free Microsoft account and then you can create a OneNote notebook. Now, this isn't the same as Class Notebook. I have another video about how the differences are between Notebook and uh, so OneNote and Class Notebook. There is a difference between those two. But I'm just going to show you real basically how you can create a simple kind of collaboration area that you can then share off to your students, when, especially when they're on breakout rooms. But you can also use it for anything else as well. So let me just show you how this works. So first off, you'll want to go to Microsoft and create a free Microsoft account. You don't have to create an Office 365 account. You can just create a regular Microsoft, um, used to be called Live account. And then once you have that account, you'll have access to a few things. For example, you'll have uh, Outlook, email, you have calendar, you'll have access to a space for OneDrive. There's a limited amount of space for that, but still there's a good amount of space enough for what you need to do. You have some of the basic online apps like the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, so on and so forth. OneNote is the one we're gonna be looking at today. So that's where this is. So I've created a number of notebooks in here. I'm gonna start with, now I have an account, what do I do? So I'm gonna start off with create a new notebook. So I'm gonna create new, and I'm gonna call this demonstration, just cause I'm doing a demo, and I'm gonna hit create. And it's going to create my notebook for me. Now, the idea behind OneNote is that it's a live document, documents uh, that are shoved into different sections called or folders, if you want to call it that. Um, so you have different sections, think of them like folders, and you have different pages, which are kind of like individual documents. Okay. So what we want to do is, what I do is I create a section for each day that I have class. And then inside that day, I put different pages. And so what I'll do, for example, is I will set up groups. I call them each of the pages by the different group name. So group one, group two, group three, whatever. And then I put whatever I need for that group into that page. Let me show you how I would do that. So I have my notebook here. I'm going to actually create a section. And we're just going to call this September 25th. Hit OK. OK. So now I have my September 25th one. And you'll know that you're in the right area because of the color coding. You can actually change color coding. I'm going to stay in September 25th. My page is also red. Um, and so now I'm going to actually name this one. I'm going to call this one group one. And when you put in the title here, it changes the name of the page here. So that's how you can change the name here. You can't type in here. You can only type up here to change the name. And then the rest of the information is actually down here. Now, as with OneNote, you can actually click anywhere and actually add your text and things like that. But you can also insert files, uh, you can insert audio, you can draw on it, you can do all sorts of different things. But I'm just going to show you how you can create a simple template. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to insert a table. Um, and I'm going to add some text. Um, maybe I have them working on something, filling in a grid of something or whatever. Um, I'm just going to create a very basic thing for you. I can also maybe I would also want to insert an image. So I'm going to go in here picture. Um, I'm going to choose one from online just because, um, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so I'm going to insert the image. I could insert audio as well, too, for them to listen to, whatever. Once I create the template of what I want for my entire group, and I'm happy with the way I want this, um, I then duplicate this for the other groups. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy, and then I'm going to anywhere down here, I'm just going to right click paste, right click paste. So let's say I have five groups. Okay, so now I have five groups. I usually make one extra for myself 
just so I have a template available in case another group needs to be made. Um, so I always make one extra group out of it. I'm also going to create a new page and I'm going to call this group Q and oops and okay and I can say type your questions here okay so now what I have is I have a different things I can click and drag these around all I want notice how they all say group one I'm gonna go down to the next one I'm gonna click in here and say group two I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say group three and so on and so forth okay so the last one I only have five groups I'm gonna call it group six anyway just in case a group comes along and I'm ready to go with that all right so I have the different groups I have a group Q&A &E. it's all ready to go now what I want to do now is I want to have access to that so I want to be able to have them be able to get in there and do what they need to do so I'm gonna go up to the share and I'm gonna wait for the share box to come up and then the default is anyone with the link so I'm just gonna show you anyone with a link can edit you can change that to just view but we don't want to do that we actually want them to edit so I'm gonna leave this link here and I'm gonna get copy link and I'm gonna hit copy okay so now it says anyone with the link can edit copy keep in mind they can edit anything in the notebook they can delete sections they can delete pages they can add pages they can do all sorts of stuff with this I've never had a problem with this but just be aware of that so now imagine that I'm in my zoom class and I want to get them started in the work so what I can do is I can just paste the link into the chat box and they can click on it to open it up and then once everybody's opened up and then what I do is I send them off to their groups. So once they're in their groups, they know they're in group one, group two, group three, whatever. They go to the particular day and the group number that they're in. So if they're in group three, they go to group three and they work together on the group three part. Um, and so what they can do now is they can work together on this and they can do all sorts of different things. So they can click in here and they can type, okay? Um, and they can also put in links. They can do different things. Um, they can even draw. They click on the draw tool. They can click on this and they can draw over things. They can point arrows to stuff. They can change colors, circle things. They can go to the text box over here and they can add text and they can add, then I would usually do a say, then add the arrow to point to whatever it is they want to do or they can click anywhere in here they have to go back to the text they have to click and they can drag the text to where they want it to be okay so they can work on this all they want there's even a highlighter here so they can highlight stuff all that's great so they do all of that work what's great about this is that in real time I'm seeing those changes so I can keep an eye on that now going back to the Q&A so once they're off in their groups they're working in group three and all of a sudden they have a question all they do is they go to the group Q&A type in their question I'm leaving my Q&A page up all the time and I do refresh it just in case because in the browser version it doesn't always update immediately so I'll refresh it every so often just to check and if I have something then I get something then I just type a reply back to them or if it's more complicated I go to their room and I answer it for them but this is a way for them to be able to communicate with me as well and post questions also that means that other groups if they have a question they go to the group Q&A and if someone else has the same question and I've already answered it they don't have to ask it again lastly the nice thing about this as well too is that students who are not quite sure what's going on can look at the other groups and see what they're doing and so maybe it gives them some ideas so that they can go back to their own and work on it now you wouldn't want to do this for something where there's you know maybe higher stakes never want to do that with this anyway but just to keep in mind that they could see the other groups information and so we want to have it so that it's more like a brainstorming type of session you can put in graphic organizers here and they can draw on them and edit them and do all that type of stuff and I have a video on that as well too so that is the basics and idea of how I would do that in OneNote I usually in the main group I will continue to monitor what's happening in each of the groups but I keep checking on them I check the Q&A page all the time if I see something that's not quite right or not going well I go over to that group and I start helping them now, a lot of people ask me, how do they do this? Do they have two devices or whatever? Normally, with my students, all my students are basically using this on a laptop or a desktop. So they actually can um, keep this page up. And Zoom, what they're doing is they're just doing the audio only between everybody in the group. So they're not having to see the video with each other. Um, but they can each individually have their own page up. Each can have one note, and they can all be working. Or 
option to do too is that you can have one person share the screen and everybody talk about it and that person then edits that page so depends on how you want to do that there's a lot of collaboration that can happen there and then this is semi-permanent I can keep that same share link and then the next class I just share it again so that they go to the same place but they end up at September 26th or whatever now if you want to just send them to a particular part of OneNote that's the other thing you can also do so let's just say for example I have a new one that's September 26th okay um, so it's in here I can send them directly to September 26th by copying, right-clicking on here and say copy link to section. And that will send them directly to that day's section. And that's actually how I normally do it. I don't actually have the same link that I send them every day. I send them the link to the particular section they're at. Now they can still navigate to wherever, but it, it's a quick link directly to the section where they need to be. Now, you can do all of this within Class Notebook as well. You just use it in the collaboration space instead because essentially that's what this is. This is one big collaboration space. Um, keep in mind that students will be able to access this outside of that time as well if they keep that link. A lot of my students don't do that, but if they did, they could go in here and check things. So there are other things that you can also do as well. Um, you can you know, copy sections and delete sections and copy pages and do that type of thing. So there are things that you can do to kind of make sure that everything's all right. But if somebody does happen to um, maybe screw something up, do something like that, um, there are page versions type of thing. You can click on page versions and you can actually see the versions of a page. So I can click on here and see page versions. Now, because this hasn't been that long, you wouldn't see any page versions here, but you could see page versions if it's been there for a little bit. So that's it. That's actually everything about how you can use OneNote in your uh, live class. So over to you. Think about what you could do with this, how you could play with this, how you could try things out, and um, let me know. Put stuff in the comments, let me know.